Welcome to Chart Loops SaaS org chart series. I'm here today with John Calvani. We are going to talk to you how to plan your uh, startup hiring from seed stage all the way uh, down to an IPO. Welcome, John. Hey, Sean. It's great to be here. Excited. This is a huge uh, growth in, in our environment, and, and more and more companies are getting investments. More and more companies are needing to grow. We do that from C to Series A, from Series A to B, from Series C to D, and, and onward. So excited to be here and, and, and uh, conversate about what's going on in the market and see if we can help anybody. Absolutely. So, so let me share a little bit here, and we're going to talk a little bit about, about our series. So um, the SAS org chart concept um, starts, starts with uh, David Sachs, uh, who's, a, who's a notable uh, entrepreneur. His early days were with, he was the COO of PayPal. Uh, and then he's notable for, for building uh, Yammer, selling it to Microsoft. Uh, and currently he's, he's a uh, venture ca capitalist at uh, Craft Ventures. And he, he, uh, he has his blog and he's, he's quite a, uh, a uh, thought leader uh, in terms of uh, SaaS, uh, sales teams, um, uh, org planning. And he, he had this uh, blog post, which he published this summer about, um, about uh, planning your org chart, which then uh, ballooned into a full-fledged uh, talk, which he gave at Saster um, um, a little while ago. And he explains exactly how, how to plan uh, and go uh, and hire at every, every stage of your series. So we're gonna be sharing some of his insights, uh, but the twist that we're gonna take on it is we're gonna look into some real world examples uh, and, and, and startups at each of these stages. So like a series eight, um, eight uh, company, you know, how do they hire? Um, how, how big is uh, the sales versus marketing team? And, and John is gonna share some of his expertise, how, how from the hiring perspective, how you go plan, uh, and and find find that talent. So that's that's um, that's our series. Um, what do you say, John? Should we do this? I'm excited. Let's do it. Okay, fantastic. So so we're gonna start with a little bit of background here from David Sachs. Uh, some of his his uh, slides that we uh, we're sharing here for for some background. Uh, so first of all, some giving some some uh, rules of thumbs of thumb. Right, just the kind of the different stages of a company uh, from from a revenue and and uh, employee size uh, ratio. So a Series A company, that's where we're gonna we're gonna start off with because going smaller, uh, there's kind of no rules really. Right, when you're at the kind of seed stage or friends and family, uh, but but a Series A startup uh, typically uh, gets to a million dollars uh, in ARR. Uh, the headcount reaches about forty or or fifty. Uh, and each employee contributes about uh, 25K of ARR. And then as, as you start scaling, like a, a Series B startup, you'd be doing uh, about 5 million in ARR, you're, you're reaching uh, 100 to 120 employees. Uh, series C, you're, you're talking about $20 million in ARR and hundreds of employees. And then to an IPO, when, when, when you're typically looking at $100 million in ARR and 1,000 employees, each one contributing uh, 100K. Uh, of, of ARR uh, per, per employee. Now, when it comes to hiring, there's things you want to focus on and there's things, things you don't want to focus on. Uh, where your focus should be within any business, as David puts it, it's within uh, half of the business goes to sales and marketing, right? Uh, just shipping and, and, and getting, getting, the, uh, getting the products uh, sold uh, and marketed. And the other 40% the other is the R&D, the whole building and product and uh, technology side of it. And then a very small portion goes to, to GNA, right? Your, your legal, your, your accounting uh, processes, things, things that don't really add value per se to, to the business. They don't make you cutting edge, but, but it's something you need to do in order to operate. Now, it sounds easy, like you can just hire all, all day long, but uh, right, it, it comes at a cost. Every, every, uh, every group of employees needs, uh, every, every IC and, uh, has to have a, a manager. So typically, um, a group of five to ten employees needs to have a, a manager um, to uh, to manage them within the sales team, right? So so this is a diff different ratio. So every every SDR, one SDR can su support two uh, AEs, two sales reps, um, and so so on. With a one sales ops person can can probably support 10, 10 reps, uh, and, and there's a ratio for, for for each one of them. So so then you can you can you can see that if you're if you have a team of uh, you know thirty sales. Uh, People and oh, we're, we actually have uh, we're outsourcing our, our sales operations 
uh, you know you're you're probably you're probably doing some something wrong, um, and 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 so on. Also also uh, so uh, works also with with the whole uh, uh, development, right? So every uh, every every five to eight uh, developers uh, have a manager. I've I've seen in a lot of companies a lot less. Every group of three or four uh, developers have, have their own managers. So so it's something that you need to uh, you need to to to, to plan. Uh, uh, meticulously, so you're actually utilizing your your employees, but really you want your focus on two two areas. One is is sell, sales, right, which is generating the revenue, and the other one is is the R and D and engineering, which is which is building building the uh, product. Okay, so that's kind of a little intro. But David, uh, but but John, tell tell us a little bit more about a, a Series A startup. H how does it look? Uh, maybe more from from a hiring perspective and and looking to uh, attract um, the talent. Yeah, definitely, and and I think. It would be good to just touch on the, the slide before it because I think it would frame it well. Uh -huh. So on the on the slides before, it's definitely just a rule of thumb, right? So if you can go into different series days and see different structures in the business. You may have one founder who's a great product developer, and in one business, you may have a one one uh, founder who's a great salesperson, and they're going out being that one person selling the product, and the rest of the people in the business are sales and engineering. And as you scale, obviously things fluctuate and you want to make sure that if you if you find someone that can lead themselves or be that individual contributor, you empower them, right? So it's all about scaling organically and, and correctly and not being so too structured. But I think this is a great rule of thumb and it kind of gets into the, the point of what you normally see at a Series A, if you don't mind uh, just clicking sure. on the next slide, Sean. So I, I think this is really a great kind of overview of what you'll normally see. I think in most cases, you'll see smaller teams of a Series A business. I think you'll see under 50 majority of the time, and especially uh -huh. in a high technology market or a SaaS-based product or, or a platform-based uh, product, you're going to see smaller teams anyways, just because the need for people isn't that high. If you have a strong founder that has the ability to go out into his network and sell, or start enterprise deals, or if it's a B2C and, and he has the ability to get the word of mouth out there, or he or she has the ability to get the word of mouth out there quickly, uh, work with their network and, and use their past roles or experiences to do so, then you're only gonna see say 10 or 15 developers on the team, maybe one marketing person and a, you know, a few customer, you know, maybe one customer service people. And then I think, over a trajectory of a year, a Series A business may look a lot different, right? I think when you start with 12 employees, an HR person isn't top of mind. But when you get to that point of 25 and you have a management and you, ha and you wanna bring in an, an executive assistant and you wanna bring in a few, a, an intern or someone you know, more junior, an HR has that, uh, there's a demand for that. And as your uh, company grows at, at every level, there's going to be needs and wants from everybody within the business. And the best thing to do is really listen because the people within your business are really getting into the nit and gritty of it. They may really feel, hey, we need more enterprise salespeople. Hey, we need more developers. Hey, we need more people. We need an HR representative. Um, these are things that usually happen organically at Series A levels. And um, as you grow your business, it's always being pushed by, I think, two main things. And we just talked about sales and engineering, right? Mm -hmm. Is the product getting better? Is it just a concept still? Or is the product live? Can you now go and hire salespeople to, to start hunting in the market for new business? Um, you know, mm -hmm. is, is the product uh, just a concept right now and you need more developers to build out a certain utility on it? You know, th that's, that's being pushed by, I think, just the business organically. And Yep. You know, a Series A may last a year or so, so things can even change within that. Mm -hmm. I think that's good to be a conscious of as well. Yeah, as you can see, like the boxes here, just just like you're saying, um, most of it, most of the activity is really driven by by the founder or the team of founders, and then every every function here is not led by like a VP sales, but rather like you'll have a head of sales. So maybe maybe it's a you know an account executive who's, who's kind of senior, has been around for a few years, or a head of marketing. Uh, right for marketing and, and, and director of uh, CSM for 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 your uh, customer success, but then right the next in the next step you're going to actually need some real management. But currently it's it's all kind of organic and and uh, grassroots, uh, very much like you were saying. Yep. 
Nice. Okay, so so this is kind of you know as you said uh, you know a template of, of a pretty you know pretty well well structured or, or pretty advanced right. This is like probably like a minute before they got their their uh, term sheet for for a B series or, or the the next round. But now let's let's jump into into a real world example of uh, a real uh, Series A startup, uh, a company called Uniswap, and let's let's try to understand how how they're set up today and how do they set themselves up for for success in terms of planning their SaaS um, org chart. So, um, so John, tell us a little bit about uh, Uniswap. I know you're also beyond being a, a pro with with with, uh, with hiring and, and recruiting. You also know a little bit about the world of crypto. Um, so, for, do we, would we would we expect anything different about a crypto the way a crypto startup would be set up? So, I, honestly, I just don't know. I think we're entering a really interesting world of fintech and now dis decentralized. Uh, financial technology, but I would put that within the fintech bubble. Um, and I think a lot of people are starting to realize that there's real utility out of these projects. Um, and these projects are now becoming large companies. I think Uniswap is one of the most known uh, utility or, or DeFi projects on the Ethereum uh, blockchain, which is really interesting. And if you, if you don't follow crypto much, then that probably means nothing. But for those who do, most most people will know about a Uniswap or SushiSwap. Those are the biggest names out there. And really what Uniswap is, it's a smart contract that allows you to exchange certain types of Ethereum tokens to yep. other Ethereum tokens. And it enables users of it to then provide liquidity so people can do so. Um, if you want to buy Dogecoin, there needs to be Dogecoin in the market to take yeah. your Ethereum. Um, and, and that's really the, the simple of it. So I think with a business like this, uh, one of the biggest areas of focus should be on product and, and word of mouth growth. Um, it's really interesting to, to start seeing uh, businesses like this grow and it, you can see them firsthand. You can visit their website and see the liquidity provided on the website grows and, and grows and, and how much gets put in every day. And that's a great understanding of, hey, it, it, is this community growing? It, it, all these projects are very community driven at this point. Um, but soon, I think they'll become more, I don't know, I don't want to say corporate, but they're going to be, start becoming more formal businesses. Um, it's really interesting to see like Uniswap and other projects growing on LinkedIn and growing their presence here in the U.S. I think uh, bringing in um, a, a community within your business is so important to not only growing the name out there in the market, but also growing culture within your business. And especially in a, a space like DeFi, you need as much talent as you can get right now because there's limited talent out there. There's limited people who even know that it exists. Um, so it's all about making sure that you can attract those people who do and, and that they want to be in good projects. Absolutely. So, so let's take an actual look um, at the way they're set up, how many people they have. As you said, you know, they're, they're kind of a, a money exchange, right, for, for uh, Web3 and crypto. Uh, they're, they're definitely one of the very successful ones. I, I think their volume is in the billions. Uh, traded daily, uh, but but if, if we look at their actual right numbers of, of, of their headcount, we can see on LinkedIn right there's they have forty people um, hired so far right they've been they've been growing uh, you know uh, about thirty uh, percent or I mean hundred percent in the last year, but it's 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 still pretty small right it's not like uh, crazy uh, and then if, when we look at their at their at the, you know the distribution it seems like most of the employees are are within this engineering bucket. Um, some finance. I mean, what, what would you expect? Um, I mean, from such a company, um, I, they, they would probably be more on the B two C side, right? So, so I would I would assume they wouldn't really have a big a big footprint of a sales team. Yeah. So I, I think to a point with this business, we'll have to decide: is are we going to target enterprise clients, or are we going to keep it, you know, uh, consumer driven, person to person driven, peer to peer driven? Do we want to, because the best way to get used by peer to peers or, or B2C is I think word of mouth, right? So if you're growing word of mouth, what you really want to focus on is I think your marketing and, and your product. You want to make sure you have a really strong product that people can't stop talking about. But also you see on their, um, their people and insights that they, they're investing in art and design and marketing. That's yeah. a big piece to it, everything. User experience on these products is huge. And a lot of times it's very front end. It's yeah. very, very uh, marketing focused, the arts focused. Um, yeah. I think what you also see in the business like this is 
the, the need for engineers, which means they have a lot, they have a long way to go. Their roadmap is probably not even close to finish. The products they want to put out, their end goal, maybe they're one hundredth of the way, one tenth of the way there. Their product now is great and one of the most used on the market. I think um, as people use it more and more, there's going to be nuances and intrinsic things or, or pain points that consumers have that they're going to be able to solve with new products on top of this ecosystem. And that's really one thing, right? The more people you get involved in these ecosystems, the more problems you have, which is a good thing, because that means more, more pain points to go after, more entrepreneurs to solve issues. Um, and then I, that leads to the biggest issue in DeFi and crypto in general is the limited supply of human capital, right? We need more people, we need more thinkers, exactly. we need more people just conscious of it. Um, yeah, so, so, so this was a great example uh, of a Series A, right? B2C, super hot startup, how, how they're organized. Um, in the next session, we're gonna dive into uh, the next phase, how a Series B company is, is set up, right? Getting larger uh, and, and, and getting more established established with their peoples and processes. Uh, maybe a last question for you on this uh, before our next session is how, what would you suggest to, to these, you know, companies, very, very competitive spaces, how do they attract uh, talent, especially like everybody's trying to hire for, for engineering, for R&D, how do you do it? Wow, it's, it's really about um, putting yourself out there or as a business that gives a good first impression. Whether that's your reviews on Glassdoor, whether that's personal um, you know, conversations people are having with people in the business or, or maybe they interviewed with the business, Everything should be, yeah, this is a great business, great product. Um, and then within your business, you want to prompt really good culture. You want people to have a fun time. You want people to want to build a community around it. Because the best thing about working at your business on day one or day five may not be the product. It may be the people within the business. It may be the leadership. It may be the snacks you have. That's, my, that's my, what draws someone. So really play into that. Um, really understand what what would get you up in the morning? What would you get, what would get you to going? And everyone's different. Um, so when you meet people, when you're hiring, you know, really understand that, make sure, obviously there's an underlying theme, let's build a successful business, but that can be done in a million ways. Um, and yeah, and, and for, I think for like a, a DeFi business and, and crypto company like Uniswap, the biggest thing is keep promoting and educating in this space, especially if it's something as new as this, keep on pushing it. Um, this is a great opportunity for a lot. I think we're, we're going to go into a long uh, journey with, with decentralized finance and crypto. I think it's going to end up really, really well and, and pushing humanity forward, but it's going to be a long journey for sure. Absolutely. Fantastic, John. This, this was super insightful, uh, building your SaaS org chart for a Series A company. Stay tuned for our next session on building uh, Series B companies and scaling. Thank you, John.